program. My name is Raul Fonts. I'm the Associate Vice President and Dean of Admission and Financial Aid, and it is fantastic to have you here tonight. Um, tonight is a, an opportunity for, for parents to get your final questions answered as we draw closer to May 1st and the ultimate decision that your, your sons and daughters will have to make here by midnight on the 1st. Let me start by congratulating you all because you all deserve tremendous congratulations. Your sons and daughters have done an unbelievable job. And I know exactly what you have been dealing with because I too am the parent of a current senior in high school who has gone through all the things that seniors this year have had to go through, whether it's virtual learning, whether it's hybrid learning, going in some days, not going in other days, not participating in athletics, participating in some, some things. Um, so I understand the challenges. They've been unbelievable and they should be celebrated, applauded just for getting through this college search process and gaining acceptance to Providence College. Um, is, is tremendous and they deserve a lot of credit. Not only am I the parent of a current high school senior, I'm also the parent of a current Providence College senior who's going to be graduating in a few weeks. And he's had an incredible experience here. He's a member of our basketball team um, and a double major in finance and English. And he raves about his four years and can't believe that it's, that it's been four years already. He's also very lucky in that he's been a walk-on on our men's basketball team and has had incredible experience. He's having such a great experience that he's staying for one additional year to complete his MBA and to play for another year of eligibility on the basketball team. And he'll be joined by his younger brother. His, uh, his younger brother will also be a walk-on this year. So I am definitely going to be living the dream of watching them, the two of them, on the same team for the first time uh, ever. They've never played together. So I'm really thrilled about that. The scope tonight is all about parents and getting your final questions answered. After, after this session, you're gonna have sessions on orientation and residential life. There's going to be a session on academic research, um, study abroad, global education, and finally careers and, and outcomes and how well our students do um, after they graduate from Providence College. So it, it is a full plate, but it's going to move very quickly. Um, it'll be less talking and hopefully more answering your, your questions and your thoughts of what, what, what we can answer for you and, and in turn um, help you in, in making this decision. Um, hopefully some of you have already made the decision and you're just getting more information. I, I, welcome, I welcome you to the Fryer family already and tell your friends, tell your friends, tell, tell everyone um, what, a great, what a great place Providence College is. We're gonna start tonight with the, one of the most important, if not the most important aspect of your sons and daughters career and that is academic life at Providence College. And who better to talk about the academic experience than the Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Sean Reed. So I'm gonna turn the program over to, to Dr. Reed and then I'll come back and hopefully you'll have plenty of questions and we can answer as many of them as we possibly can before we turn the, the program over to the next presenters. So with that, Sean, the program is all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for that kind intro, Raul. And I appreciate you uh, correcting yourself and saying the most important part, not one of the most important parts. That's right. The most important. Absolutely. So for the families that are joining us, uh, I'll, I'll add my congratulations to Raul. Recognizing that this is the last week before the, the family makes a very important decision about you know, where your students are gonna head off to college next year. Appreciate you taking the time to, to listen to us tonight and hopefully make that decision. So recognizing that the audience tonight is probably uh, either already decided to come and they're looking for reinforcement that they right, made the right decision. Yes, you did. 
and others who are on the fence and it maybe narrowed it down to a short list and PC is one of the remaining schools on that short list. And you're looking for something to help you make that decision. And that's why I hope the next 10 minutes or so will be. And then we'd love to open it up to your questions. So like Raul, I am, am the, the parent of a graduating senior. So like Raul, I'm in the, the same boat as you and making these tough decisions. And uh, I'm also the dad of seven kids. And so I've been through this process already with uh, five, the five older ones uh, before my graduating senior. So I've, I've been in your shoes. I know that this is an incredibly difficult decision. And you know, you, you, especially this late in the game as you're getting ready to make that final decision, uh, looking for something to grab onto. So with tonight's, let, you know, tonight's talk, what I like to do is acknowledge that if your student was good enough to be accepted into Providence College, they have other options. Providence College relative to our pair, peers is a selective school and by gaining admissions to Providence College, we know that you have your student has other options. Every school has something that makes it great. And I actually, you know, Raul will hate me for saying this, but you know, your job, your student's job is to find the place that's the best for them. And it might be Providence College, it might not be Providence College. But as you're in that home stretch and you're looking at what is the school that my student is gonna head off to, they start to blur together and you have sat through so many, you know, Zoom webinars and hopefully you've had the chance to come and visit campus and been on so many campus tours that one school starts to blur together. And the advice that I give to parents and to the students that I meet with that are going through this process is lots of schools have things that they that that every school has. So every school is going to tell you about their committed faculty, the career placement, the excellent facilities and all kinds of those things. That's really background noise. And, and while Providence College is incredibly proud of our committed faculty, our tremendous outcomes, our unbelievable facilities, you, what you really wanna do in this last week is find out what is the, the differentiator. So I'm the provost, but I, I'm also a, a business faculty member. I teach finance. And when we look at, we look at a company say, what makes that company a product differentiated? And every school has one or two things that make them special. And for the next few minutes, I'd like to tell you about what makes Providence College special. So for me, what is the primary differentiator for Providence College? It is in our mission. And if you look at the mission for schools like us, many of those are interchangeable. And if you didn't, if you didn't see the web page in the top of the, uh, the school in the top of the corner of the web page, you wouldn't even know one mission from another. Providence College Missions is right up front. We're a Catholic and Dominican college. We're the only college in, in the country that is run by the Dominican friars. They're a presence on campus. They're an important part of our culture. They're involved as faculty members. They're in the residence halls. They're in mission and ministry. They work in administration. They wear the habit, so they're visible everywhere on campus. They're an incredibly important part of the community, and it permeates everything we do. The curricularly and academically, what makes us different is that we don't just pay lip service to the liberal arts education. Many schools out there say, well, you know, with the Liberal Arts Foundation, we're a comprehensive school. And what a comprehensive school means is a common liberal arts curriculum and then, you know, some, some differentiated professional programs. Providence College has an unbelievable business school, an unbelievable school of professional studies but we are to our core, a liberal arts college. You see that no, no better place than our core curriculum, the, the DWC, a development of Western civilization program. You hear it from alumni when they talk about CIV, it's the one common bond that all of the students and alumni at Providence College have. I equate it to, uh, you know, if you talk to a Marine, every Marine can tell you exactly about the, their experience in boot camp. Every PC alumnus can tell you about their experience with CIV. It's the, the formative experience in the, in the education, and it's the foundation for anything that you do beyond your, your sophomore year, whether you're a finance major, uh, studying one of the natural sciences to go on to medical school, elementary special education, 
all of the, the, the other options you have are built on the incredibly strong foundation of the liberal arts. Another thing that makes us uh, different than some of our peers in this special year of COVID is a steadfast commitment to being in person for the fall semester. We, we were one of the few schools that made the early call that we were gonna be fully in person for the fall semester. Uh, we did everything we could to, to make sure that the students had the maximum number of in-person experiences. It's one of the things that, that makes Providence special. Uh, we, we recognize that the residential undergraduate is one of the core things about Providence College. And we were one of the first schools to make our commitment for, the, for next fall to, so that the, the incoming students for the class of 2025 know what they're getting themselves into. We've just completed an incredibly challenging year and I find finishing it very successfully on a strong note where we've been able to have the vast majority of our, our academic year and our courses delivered in person and having our students on campus. And we're looking forward to having that be 100% for next fall. Very few of our competitor schools are, are confident enough to make that, that statement today. We think uh, the, the Providence College experience is best experienced in person, and we're committed to delivering that for, for next semester. And we hope that uh, you know, that is a differentiator for us. The other thing, one of the other major differentiators that I would, that I would throw out there as you're comparing one school versus another is as Raul talked about with his son being a, a double major in finance and English. That's, that's very uncommon. So, you know, Providence College, the way the curriculum is organized, it does give flexibility for the students to do a double major, particularly difficult to have two majors in two different schools. So being able to have a finance major and one in the, in the School of Arts and Sciences is doable at Providence and it's difficult at a lot of our other schools. We have an incredible number of students that do double majors, but then for the ones that don't have the interest or capacity in their schedule to do the double major, the number of students that do minors is incredible. And so we, we encourage students to, to focus on an area that they're interested in, but then also have a fallback for something that they think is gonna to lead to a, a, a better job market. Uh, they're unsure of their plans in the future. A significant number of our students coming in into the class of 2025 are coming in as undeclared. And my, my personal view is that's, that's part of the college journey. A 17 year old student that comes to college knowing exactly what they wanna do with the rest of their, their life and, and knows what major to pick because they know what they wanna do after graduation is the exception, not the rule. And even the students that do come in with a chosen major, vast majority of them are gonna change their major at least once. And I can tell you from firsthand experience with my five older kids that, that every one of them has changed their major at least once through, through college. The, the, the interaction that you have as a, a, a student here at Providence College with the faculty in the small class size, with the close mentoring relationship that you have with your advisor, uh, helps you navigate this. You know, finding out whether a, a major is something that you have a passion for, getting advice on, on picking a minor that will complement your interests. You're not just a number here. You're not, got, you're not in a, a lecture hall with 300 other students. You are someone that, that the, the Fryer family cares about. And before we go over to some questions and I see them popping up in the Q&A and I do wanna make sure we have plenty of time for that. The true thing that is the differentiator for Providence College, I've been here as the provost and senior vice president for academic affairs since last July. As I was preparing to, to interview for the job in the first place and then make the move to Providence, all of the research that I did on the college, you kept hearing about the Fryer family, the Fryer family. And it's a buzzword and I, I'm a, you know, I've been in this business for a while and having been through the college search with my older kids, I see that this uh, can be kind of a, a salesy gimmicky thing. And, and so hearing something like the Fryer family could just be another marketing ploy. Having been here now for 10 months, I've never felt more part of a community. And that, that Friar family is so true. And it goes from 
you know, the president's office, through all of the, the, the academic and administrative leadership, but right down to the, to the staff that work with the students and the students themselves. There is a genuine feeling that we are all part of, of one Friar family. My limited experience in this one challenging year gives me, I think, a unique perspective. Families pull together in times, tough times. This has been a tough year for the country, for the state, and for Providence College. The way that the community is pulled together as a Friar family, mind-boggling. So you, as I, I'll close, and I see Raul popping in with some questions. We recognize that you have options. Congratulations on having been accepted to Providence College. There are many students out there that, that are not in that case. So you've made it over the first hurdle. You have one more important decision to make. I hope you make the right decision and go Friars. And Raul, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Um, there are a few questions here, Sean, and I, I'm wondering if you could tackle this 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 first question. How does how do students pick their major? Is it easy to change their major, um, even when they might be going between two different schools? Could you tackle that? Certainly. So the as I just stated, what is it, about half the class coming in as undeclared, Raul? Yeah, it's, a, it's about 40% of the class will be undeclared. And so that's a, that's a big, that's a big uh, population that will be not choose, you know, not having a major when they start. And that's where academic advising comes in. Right. And, and so the, the choosing the major part of it, there, there are some advantages to knowing what you want to do when you come in. And, and I'll use finance as the example because I'm a finance professor. If you know that you want to be a finance major when you come in, you will, for example, the summer prior to come, arriving on campus, uh, be invited to, to complete the Microsoft Excel certification so that you can jump right into your quantitative courses uh, your first year. You, you will probably be assigned to a finance faculty member as your advisor to get this advice. So if you know you wanna do finance, great, come in and you know you wanna do finance. If you come in undecided, or if you come in thinking you wanna be a political science major, which, as I was as an undergraduate major, and then you take your first political science class and decide that's not for you, uh, you have a roommate who's a finance major and you just learn about it and say, this is something I'm interested in, absolutely doable to change it. And I would say up till the end of your sophomore year, it's entirely feasible and reasonable and to finish without taking additional courses or staying for an, an additional year, as long as you make that decision before you start your junior year. So, you know, as, as the positives that come from knowing what you wanna be as a major, as a dad, my preference is actually to say, come in with an open mind, recognizing that you know, what you, what you think you know about a, a, a major or a career path probably isn't the real world. And that's part of the college experience is coming and learning about those things, talking to the faculty, talking to the alumni, talking to the upperclassmen students that you're gonna be working with and, and learning on your own through career services, career education, professional development, and, and knowing that there are people that are there to help you make that decision. Couldn't agree with you more, Sean. It's about planning. It's about meeting with, you know, in my son's case, he he decided in his sophomore year, much to our surprise, that he was going to double major in English. He had a he had an English core class. He fell in love with with English, and and you know, then it became a matter of of planning and how he was going to achieve uh, getting those both go both done in, in a four year period of time. And he, he's done a great job. And going, There's another and going question. back to the part about the Friar family, Raul, is that at a lot of places you, you decide as a sophomore, you wanna change a major or do a double major. The predisposition is to say, no, that's too difficult. You know, that, right. that, that's too many hoops to jump through. We don't, that, you know, don't, don't worry about that. The predisposition here is to say, how do we make that work? How do we do it? Wanna do? How do we make it work? Right. Right, and not have to stay for an extra semester or an extra yeah. year where it, where it's costing the parents more more dollars. Um, here, here you're still able if you're planning it well in advance, you can still get that done in in four years of time, which I think is 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 critically important. Um, there's another question here, Sean, about returning uh, to in person, um, and and does that impact or change the size? 
and shape of classes in the fall semester? What is, what's going to be the landscape of our classroom experience in the fall? Yep, that, and that is a great question. And, and so if, if you're familiar with the curriculum, particularly with DWC, the, the, the CIV course, uh, that first semester is built around uh, you, you know, DWC 101, which is the course, which is broken down into one large class lecture and then smaller uh, seminars that build into it. So there are four seminars that lead to one lecture. The only class a typical incoming student is gonna take with more than 40 students is that, set, that, that lecture. So if we, we're confident right now that, that with the, the vaccine and the declining infection rates and the relaxation of social distancing rules and things like that, that even at the three feet of separation, we'll be able to fully occupy all of our classes. The one wild card, I think, would be those large lectures and, and if we're gonna be able to fit all the students safely into those large lecture halls, maintaining that, that safe social distance, that, that's the one wild card. We're confident in planning for that to happen, but every other course in the curriculum, you should expect to be in the normal class with the normal class size, which is small, and having that individual experience with your faculty member. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Sean. That that's that's great. I think that'll make uh, for a, a a much better experience come this fall. I you know we're hoping that we're getting closer to whatever that norm is or normal is. Uh, you know, I think that that will be that's going to be a great experience. I've got one last question here, and it's to me uh, as as a current PC parent, how do I feel supported? What should I expect as a parent of PC? I have a probably a little bit of a of an advantage because I, I work at the college. This question is bit. from this this question is for my wife, quite frankly, <laughs> and she feels she feels incredibly supported. And the key to that support, and this is the you know this is the advice, is the communication, uh, the communication that we receive from the college the communication that she receives from Jackie McKay, who's the director of our parent program is outstanding. The communication on upcoming events, reminders, academic you know, advising, registration, all of those things that sometimes your sons and daughters will back burner. We, we find out about those things and, and can certainly um, press the right buttons on the phone to make sure that your, your sons and daughters, and, and in my case, my son and, and my incoming son are aware of, of the happening. So we feel incredibly supported as, a, as PC parents. And I'm saying that from my wife's perspective because sometimes I get home and the conversation starts something like this. Did you know that X, Y, and Z are happening on campus? And a lot of times, no, I, I didn't know, um, but I'm glad you told me. So now we can remind him. I'm getting the the the, the oh. five minute warning here that we need to transition. Um, I want to thank Doc, Dr. Reed uh, for for being a part of this this session. We're going to transition to the next session. I want to thank all of you parents and guardians for coming to our, our portion of the program. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, you know, like Dr. Reed said, I, I think truly that there's someone, there's some place for everyone. We hope a good number of you will select Providence College and that we see you here in August. Thank you so much. Have a great night. And remember, go Friars. Go Friars. Go Friars. Thank you.